Okay, hi there, welcome to another in our series of short videos looking at how to build analytical chains of reasoning uh, for your A-level exams. This is a micro one, it's about market failure, and in particular, it's about the, uh, the impact of petrol and diesel cars. We'll take this question, analyse why the use of petrol and diesel vehicles may be a source of market failure. Highly topical, of course, the UK government uh, has revealed plans to uh, to ban internal combustion engines for new lorries after 2040, following a ban on diesel and petrol cars after 2020, 2035 to help tackle the, the climate crisis. So uh, in a few years' time, in a decade or more, uh, new petrol and diesel cars and vehicles will be banned in the UK, uh, partly because of the, the, the estimated contribution they make to carbon emissions. And in London, the mayor, Sadiq Khan, is considering a new daily clean air charge for petrol and diesel cars, expanding the ultra-clean air zone to cover the entire capital. So the question about whether petrol and diesel cars leads to market failure is a great one in terms of building an analytical chain of reasoning. I would start with a definition, because uh, the question does mention market failure. So market failure occurs when the allocation of our scarce resources is inefficient from society's point of view. Uh, there's a gap, there's a difference between the social and the private optimum in terms of allocation of scarce resources. Externalities are third party spillover effects from production and or consumption for which no appropriate compensation is paid to those affected. And uh, my, my, you know, my instinct is that people using petrol and diesel vehicles, driving cars and lorries, are a cause of negative externalities, mainly from consumption. I guess you could make a case for saying uh, that uh, there are externalities from production if you're looking at things like transport services. But let's just think about people using their cars. They're going to cause negative externalities from consumption. And uh, those external costs, I'm going to assume, depends on which exam board you study, they're going to cause the marginal social cost of using those vehicles to diverge away from, indeed above, the marginal private cost. I'll build that into my analysis diagram. Th thus, the price paid by the driver, the internal cost paid by the driver, is lower than the social cost of consumption. Don't forget, social cost equals private cost plus external cost. And uh, just as a bit of application to build the chain of reasoning, an example would be the risk of chronic health problems, such as asthma, which affects well, tens of thousands of people living in urban areas, and in particular many children living close to busy roads, well-documented health problems, which imposes long-term extra costs on the National Health Service. Economic agents are assumed not to take account of the cost their decisions impose on others. And thus, the market fails, in the absence of intervention of course, the free market fails to price negative externalities properly, leading to overconsumption from a social perspective, which of course is market failure. So build your answer up and support it with a diagram, external costs damage third parties, but the consumer and the producer don't necessarily have to pay for that, meaning their output will be too high. Overproduction, Q1 versus Q2, is a sign of market failure. And in the case of negative externalities, which we're discussing here, the market price, P1, will be too low in the market. The social optimum is where we take into account the externalities, where marginal social cost meets marginal benefit. Uh, but in the absence of that, the market failure leads to uh, a loss of social welfare. Uh, and that's that deadweight loss of welfare is shown by the triangle A, B, C. So there we go. A quick look at an analytical chain of reasoning supported with a diagram on the question of petrol and diesel cars and the uh, causing market failure. OK, thanks for joining in. Take care. Stay safe. Stay curious. See you sometime soon.